So we're going to look at this question here. We're trying to model temperature over a day. And here day means a 24 hour period, not just daylight hours. And we're going to use a sinusoidal function, meaning sine or cosine. We'll decide that later. We know the temperature varies between 62 and 98 degrees during the day. So let's go ahead and start with that information. We're going to need some axes here. Now, the way I drew it, uh, I'm assuming there's some negative temperatures. Obviously, looking up here, there's no negative temperatures. So let's go ahead and put the x-axis, or in this case, the time axis, way lower. And then what we'll do is say that this is midnight right here, which would be 0. Usually we would say 12, but that would be the uh, same as midnight. And then there'd be 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And let's count instead of 1s. Let's go by 2s, I think would be good. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I'm going to go ahead and write 14, which is really 2 p.m., 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Now, of course, 24 is 0, so we'll write this as uh, midnight again, which would mean the next day is going to start after that. So we're not going to grab anything past 24 right there. What would happen is you would end up looping back around to the beginning and tracing your temperature back through. So, sum this information, let's go ahead, 62, 98 degrees, that's the smallest and largest temperature, and of course temperature is the y value, or the vertical axis here. So our lowest is 62, exactly how far up we should go, mm, let's just say, that's 62, and 98, so that's obviously higher, now this is not to scale right here, meaning that this distance right here looks like smaller than that, but it's actually bigger. So I'm not worried about the scale exactly. Uh, if you really want to make this graph more accurate, you can redo this axis here. And the way that you denote that it's not to scale, you put this little jagged line right there, meaning that that's not to scale. All right, let's start to dig into more of this information. 8 a.m., average daily temperature first occurs at 8 a.m. So 8 a.m. is average. So what's average? Well, average is directly between these two numbers. Let's do a fast computation. Add and divide by two. So that is 160 over two, which is 80. Very nice number. Your numbers may not be quite so nice. So right in between we got 80 and that happens at 8 a.m. There is a similar question that gives slightly different information. I am learning about the average temperature, uh, what time it occurs, but it could have told me about the maximum temperature or maybe the minimum temperature at different times, and in which case you would be learning about different points on your curve. All right, temperature varies between, first occurs at eight. How many hours after midnight does temperature first reach 75 degrees? So we're going to have to make a few assumptions, which is uh, assuming it's colder at night than daytime. So if I, I'm going to just quickly draw a curve. Uh, let's say it might look something kind of like this right here. But we're going to be a little bit more accurate than just this. And of course, daytime, it just increases, increases, increases until it's some maximum and then decreases again. All right, so let's be a little bit more accurate here. If it's a sine curve, this is a midpoint right here. What I'm gonna do is come back with the green marker. I'm gonna draw the middle line here. Our period, it's already dictated by the fact that it occurs sinusoidal in one day. So our period is 24 hours, oh, went a little too far. So that means we have well, we'll worry about more specifics of that later, but the period is 24, so that half a period is 12. So 12 hours after this temperature, we're gonna hit the same temperature again. We're gonna be at the middle line again. So it's 12 plus eight, that is 20. So we got our other average right there. And the assumption I made was daytime's hotter than nighttime. 
and that means your high daytime is going to occur directly in between these two numbers and that will happen right here and that's at 1400 hours or 2 p.m. All right, our cold temperature now is, let's see, this distance right here is six. So if I go over another six, that'll be the cold temperature, the low temperature right there. All right, I'm gonna take out some of these extra marks here, but I just wanted you to see how I got all these points. And we can basically connect these with a uh, curve here. Now what I'm gonna do is start at the low point and then go up to the average there. We're gonna hit the top point, come back down. Now this curve, if you look, it's basically offset by two right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'll go all the way to 26 here. And that would be a another low. However, our graph really ends right here at 24. So this part right here, this is a periodic function, so that part's gonna repeat right there. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna do my best and grab that little part right there. All right, now I'm gonna chop this part off on the right. We don't really need that part anymore. So let's go ahead Cut all that stuff out. All right, so this is our graph. Of course, they didn't ask us to draw a graph. I just wanted to uh, show you what the graph would look like. Now what we're gonna do is write the function that would represent this. We have pretty much all the information we want right here. All right, amplitude, we already computed somewhere. Maybe we didn't. Average is eight. Average is 80, so our amplitude is from 80 to 98. I'll measure that right here. And just looking at this, it's pretty easy to see it's 18. 98 minus 80 is 18, and 80 minus 62 is another 18. So we'll use big A as 18. Uh, we know our period is 24. Also, period is two pi over uh, W. So that means we'll move this down. over w, which also equals 24. And we're gonna solve for w, so divide by two pi, or, well, let's multiply by w. Two pi equals 24w, divide by 24. So we got 1 12th pi is w. And what function am I making? I have to decide sine or cosine. And just looking at this function, hmm. I could go with a negative cosine function, which would normally start up here. I'm gonna go with a, a sine function. The way I see the sine function here, this would be the starting point, and it would go like that. That would be one regular period of the sine function. So let's keep that in mind. That's the function that I'm going for here. So we get a sine w x minus h plus k. So we got all four transformations we have to deal with. Good news is we know a bunch of them already. 18 is the amplitude. All right, W we just computed. You can write that as just pi over 12. All right, what's our shift? So our shift is right eight. So let's write that down. S-H-I-F-T is right eight. So it's coming along here. All right, now what's K? Should be pretty clear from the graph. K is the vertical shift, and this graph got shifted up, in this case, 80. So that's our, wow, oh, that's the wrong eraser. Give me the stroke eraser. All right, boom. Okay. All right, we still haven't answered the question, but we got a really nice function out of it. Look at this. And now we can come back and say, how many hours after midnight to two decimal places does the temperature first reach 75 degrees? I'm going to guess and say it's probably not going to happen in this box right here. 75 is very close to 80. Just looking at the graph, it would be like somewhere in that area. 
So what we're going to do, that's a y value. I want to know what about 75 degrees? So we need to figure out where do we hit 75 degrees? So again, 75 is a y value. So we're going to set 75 equal to f of x. So we got 75 equals 18 sine pi over 12 x minus 8 plus 80. And now you need to solve for x. You will get infinite solutions because each one will be, uh, well, you actually get two solutions per period and then you have infinitely many periods. But as you can tell, you really want the solution that's somewhere between, I'm gonna just go ahead and say it's definitely between two and eight. It's probably gonna be sort of close to six. So we're gonna use solution closest to six. This is going to be a uh, decimal answer here, and you're going to have to use the, at the end, you're going to have to do the sine inverse. So your final answer is going to look something like sine inverse uh, of something, and you're, you can type that into a calculator and get an actual number out of there. All right, well, good luck on this problem. This is definitely a doozy. I am not covering how to actually uh, solve trig equations here. That was a previous section. So you can go back to that section and review how in the world do you solve for x. But just going over the very basics, you gotta get rid of all x's friends. So I'll just go from first to last. So first friend I take out, uh, you go PEMDAS. When in doubt, you're going up the PEMDAS ladder. So 80 goes first. That's addition subtraction. Then 18, you're gonna divide by 18. Then, sine is next, then multiply by 12 over pi, then subtract eight or add eight. So that's the order you're gonna go through and solve it. All right, good luck.